So um, you took the black off cam and uh, finished the black parts. There's really not much you did to that. Yeah, no, no, just a, a little bit of lining around those elements here. Um, very, very quick, just uh, to give it a better frame before we start with the gold. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest difference is for sure that um, I've glued the arm on mm -hmm. and also completed um, the, how do you call it, the mace. Yeah. So, so you can you see how that... parts there and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And that's actually the thing we're going to show next, um, how to paint the gold. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we definitely wanted to make sure that uh, you can already see how it looks on a big, larger surface before yeah. we actually start. I think it's always good to see where we're going at um, before we actually start doing it. Yeah, definitely. We have a very um, short but very um, dramatic transition between uh, the dark base tone and the white. Mm -hmm. Um, here I've just put on some of the base color just to save some time uh, when you show it on cam. Here is still the pure black from the foundation. Right. And um, just to show it really step by step, we'll start on that part here with the base color. The base color is somewhat green. It's a, um, I'll mix some uh, Balor Brown from Games Workshop uh, with some black. Because I want the, the gold not to be that typical red, uh, reddish gold tone, mm. but more like a cold green gold. I think that it's also something that really fits the character. If yeah. it's too warm, it just doesn't make too much sense. Okay, so it's quite dark, but um, on those small areas, it's really nice to do the uh, loaded brush technique. Therefore, I load the brush with the original color and put some white to the tip. Um, now I have to turn the figure in the right angle so I can really put a, pull the, the color in with nice, even strokes. Mm. was a little bit too uh, wet, so, uh, you can see it pooled a little. Mm -hmm. um, I will correct that once it's dry. Yeah, it's really amazing to see how fast you can create a transition with this loaded brush technique where you have uh, just two paints in the brush. And I think if uh, people just practice that a little bit, that, that is probably the biggest speed saver for you, isn't it? Or time <laughs> yeah. saver? Yeah, I think so. And you see here where I have like the, the secondary highlight on the on the leg. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to add here a second light, but not as strong as this one. So again, base color in the brush, a little bit less white to the tip. Yeah, I really like that. It's amazing. It's like I'm just imagining how I would just use this or do the try to do the same thing with uh, thin layers. <laughs> like 15 minutes later, I probably mess it up. <laughs> it's really cool. And small, really bright highlights here on the the rivets, mm -hmm. and also this here should be a little bit brighter because it's a, such a thin part. Yeah, and it's raised, and uh, it really uh, pops out a bit from from the from the uh, lower armor here, yeah. so it would really catch some light. And again, it maximizes the contrast to the really nearly black surface behind it. Yeah. All right, so without explanation, this was about 15 seconds. <laughs> There's a lot of people that hate you right now, including me. <laughs> 
But the thing is, it's really not hard. It's uh, the amount of yeah. paint in the brush, really, in the tip is, is really the secret there, isn't it? Yeah, you have to practice that a little, to be honest. Um, but once you got it, it's, it, is, it really helps you to speed up your painting. Oh, I think I might just increase this here a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because when I added the, the, the brighter highlight here, I kind of lost this part here a bit. That is more now just just a glaze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So will you also um, put more shadows on there, or will you leave it like that? I think I'll leave it like that, and uh, maybe in the end I'll see if I need a little bit more shadow. But for now, I'm quite happy with the with the brightness. Okay. I think it's quite nice um, now that I've shown you on that part um, that we complete this here because it's a lot of, a lot of very filigree very small details in gold and I think it's quite nice and uh, easy to show that part next okay cool some fresh base color here it's really important to to think about where the the light would hit the details here you have um, a small edge yeah. So you really need a bright highlight there, also some highlights here and the small rivets. Uh, they all would catch light, so uh, we can really work with small dots of light there. Mm -hmm. I'll load the brush with the um, the base tone. And we'll start with that strong highlight I was talking about. You can just see how uh, Ben removed some of the white from the brush just uh, on his fingernail. Yeah. And uh, checking the paint and the color that he actually gets there. Yeah, very simple. Very simple, yet very, very effective. Yeah. Just like marking the rivets with the light. So I also get an idea of the maximum contrast. So the upper part of those small swirls. Again, getting rid of a bit of the white. And just pulling it a bit over the surface. The uh, consistency of the white is pretty much only it's, white, right? Yeah. And, and, the, and the rest of the paint, is it a little transparent or is it also solid kind of? Yeah, it's opaque. quite 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 opaque. Okay. The uh, the the base tone is a little bit uh, thinner than the white. But uh, it's it's like the like a bit like the foundation we've mixed. I also noticed that now this time you didn't really wet the surface underneath. Yeah, because it's so small, you, you don't really need that, and you can just do it with the color that you have in the brush. Okay. So you see, uh, now also the, the white reflex here makes a lot more sense. Uh, looks a lot more uh, natural Natural than before. Yeah, in the beginning, I was, uh, I talk, we talked about this off camera, I was like, well, isn't that too bright? And you said, no, when the gold is there, it's going to be correct. <laughs> yeah, same same here. This is was quite bright when it's standalone, but now blends in a lot more because you have the light parts right yeah. next to it. So again, some fresh um, base color in the brush. Some white to the tip. And now we take care of that small little move here. Okay, you just try to be very careful and just hit the upper part of the leg. Also here, the, just the upper part of the face and the snout. So really where it catches the light. Yeah. I just remember a comment that said, am I the only one who's holding the breath when <laughs> Ben is painting details? And I was like, I can't breathe. <laughs> It's funny, isn't it? You yeah. watch somebody and just kind of stop breathing and like, yeah, like I can't breathe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we still have to keep like the the general shape of of the whole thing in mind when when we're working here on the reflex, and I want the the brightest area to be around around the eye here in the middle of the chest. Mm -hmm. 
some lighter base color at the moment. White to the tip. Placing it and it was a little too much, so I remove it and come back with the. You can also see how Ben does not use the absolute tip of the brush right now, uh, more the area where it already had the loaded um, base color on there. Yeah. Just little details like that, it's just, I think it's good to point them out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I like that reflex, but to get the shape, we also need a reflex here. Mm -hmm. Not over the whole surface, but uh, somewhat in the, in the third. So I have one reflex here, one there, and there. Also matches the underlying black reflexes that you have painted there as well. Yeah. And now that lighter gold here. We might even um, add a little bit more of that uh, Balo Brown to get it a little bit more yellow in the middle just to pull a bit more attention to that area. Also, I think the face will have some kind of red glow to it. Yeah. So just creating a little warmer area there is not necessarily the worst idea at this point. Mm -hmm. Almost too much. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mike was right. That was for sure a little bit too much. But you can just take a little bit of the that darker base tone and soften to the sides. Mm -hmm. And one of the nice things about these uh, portrait models is that the detail almost helps you paint it. Yeah. Really sharp edges. And if everything is kind of round and plasticky looking, then it's going to be much, much more difficult. Yeah, definitely. Um, those sharp details are so easy to paint because you can just uh, do several small light dots and they look good by, by themselves. Again here, that was a little too, too thick. Okay, again, just adjusting the, the position so I have a free movement for the brush. Nice. Looks like a little worn, kind of battle one gold effect on there. Yeah, I mean, still soft a little, little to the sides, but I think um, I really like the the small, also the small lights uh, reflex here that make it the metal look a little bit uh, worn and battered. I know there's a lot of people watching that are uh, also army painters and I think even there, the not even just especially there, the loaded brush technique is something that you might want to try because it will really help you speed up your painting on many things and still get a good blending. Yeah, the thing is really you need, you need a day or two to practice how much uh, highlight color you need in the tip but once that is done uh, it really speeds things up a lot. I guess it's the same as uh, what you said with uh, with the leg when we did the black. It's about a like a 85-90% finished version of what what will be in the end, right? Yeah. So when everything is set and done, when the uh, everything is uh, attached, when the face is painted, 
then you go back and yeah and correct uh, parts here and there mm -hmm. see see if i uh, can retouch some of the shadows if it, if it's needed mm -hmm. i'll continue like that on, on on this upper part here and i think i could complete the the small highlights here off cam mm -hmm. and we'll be back to to see if we need to reattach some of the shadows here perfect we or i <laughs> yeah i was not here <laughs> Um, I finished the highlights on the uh, gold uh, ornaments on the top, and I think if I look at it now, I really think we uh, we should just retouch the shadows a little, mm -hmm. um, especially uh, on an area like this here between the the outer frame and the the wolf. It's just all a bit dodgy. I will uh, mix a very thin uh, glaze of black and. Just try to, to hit a little the recesses to give it a little bit more 3D look. Kind of separating the elements a little more. Yeah. Also, here between the black and the, the wolf. Yeah. And that's a glaze now. Yeah. And uh, people who've uh, watched the other videos know that means highly diluted paint. Yeah. yeah you can see that there. Actually, one of the questions um, we had on the videos was that um, somebody tried this and said that water was pooling uh, when they tried to do the glazes. And that's probably because there was just too much liquid on the brush. Yes, uh, you really need to get a good uh, feeling for for uh, how much water there should be in the brush. If it's pooling, um, just wipe off the excess water before uh, before really touching the figure. Mm -hmm. You can just do this on the cloth, just really draw the water out and it would still work because the pigments are still there and it's still enough liquid in the brush. Yeah, I think that that it, that's it for me for for the upper part. Um, while I said that, I <laughs> I saw a little mistake I want to correct. So, uh, you see that here where where I have the white highlight. I just need more shadow underneath, so mm. I have like a real dramatic uh, reflex here. Same here on the side. Whenever the, the line kind of changes dramatically like there, you have this really pointy angle there. Yeah. You want to make sure that you maximize your contrast. Mm -hmm. Next uh, would be the, the gold elements here. Um, they are mainly the same than, than the one up here, but they are larger. So you, you have uh, one bright uh, facing, to, to, uh, facing to one side, and this will be pretty dark here, and the sharp reflex on top. This will be here again, pretty light. So you, you have always one dark side to transition to dark, and one from the other side to transition to the light. Mm -hmm. We will uh, might show that in the speed up because it's pretty much the same in here, um, but just for you guys so you don't miss anything. Okay. We'll start with the the base color. Uh, maybe even a bit darker than before, as it's not as exposed to the light as this part here. It's also pointing kind of downwards that area, the whole surface. Yeah. It's it's uh, more or less um, vertical. Mm. I might uh, um, even leave some of the black here because I want this to be uh, in a very high contrast, a little bit like here. Mm. Oh, that's interesting because I would have definitely covered the whole surface with uh, that color now, and you're just leaving a couple of spots. Yeah. But you can already see where I want the shadows. Yeah. So. Um, Interesting. It's probably another of your speed saving or time saving techniques. Yeah, if you do uh, the um, the the priming in black and white, this is not possible. But yeah. Uh, right that uh, right now it works. Okay, base color and white to the tip.
if you look at that highlight line that's been painted now, it's not one solid line. That is so important. And I, I know I say this all the time, but uh, if you just do it like in one line, it looks horrible. And this kind of uh, different thickness interrupted line just makes the whole difference. It's a good part if you if you want to watch this again, this the last 15-20 seconds. Uh, just look at the brush control, like which direction Ben is uh, moving the brush. That's it's very, very interesting. Like moving towards uh, puts the highlight on uh, with the wet under uh, coat already, and then moves always towards the highlight again to kind of smoothen things out to get this really smooth blending there. A little awkward to hold the miniature like that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it will stand like that later on. Yeah, but we can already see what you me meant with uh, very strong contrast and keeping areas in the black. Like when you see, look at the left side of this part now, how it really t uh, moves towards almost black there. Yeah, I think here on, the, on that upper part, you can already see how it works quite well uh, with the very dark uh, face contrasting that light one. Mm -hmm. And we need another highlight here, so you have this and that also contrasting. Mm -hmm. Will we show the eyes uh, later on with the face together or? Yeah, I think so. Or and maybe in the last part for the details, but we'll definitely show you one, at least one big or maybe even the two eyes. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a very nice detail, um, and uh, yeah, Horus wouldn't be Horus without the eyes. Yeah. And again, you can see how he puts paint on there, kind of uh, feathers it a little bit, cleans the brush. And then uh, if there's too much paint in one area, he just pulls it off again a little bit, just to create the, uh, the blending and the gradient he wants. It looks so simple. <laughs> yeah, with a little bit of practice it is. So. I think that's actually the point, isn't it? With, with a little practice, it's actually not that hard. Yeah, it? no, no, it's, it's an easy technique and uh, I keep telling that uh, to people, but... It, <laughs> they don't believe you. <laughs> they don't believe me, but it, it is... Uh, Really quite simple. Yeah. You can already see it works quite well in that area, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see in a second when I add some highlights here. Uh, it really uh, pops out with the with the black here. <laughs> I, I really like the, the, the cool. volume of uh, that part here. Yeah. Um, what is it called? Knee, knee protector? Uh, knee. <laughs> knee. The knee element. The knee, or the knee, the knee, element. The, the knee ornament. Yeah, really cool. I mean, to me, this looks almost like with a metal paint, really well done. And it's not. It's just amazing. Yeah, you can see uh, almost no gloss as well. So uh, when we turn it on the light, it looks the same in all the directions. Yeah. So the the rest will be done uh, off cam, and uh, we'll be back once that is completed. All right. All right. Big change. Indeed. Um, yeah, I finished the gold parts on the light. You can see that, um, but um, <laughs> the biggest change is uh, for sure 
the uh, whole um, power fist. Mm -hmm. We've shown a lot of gold. We've uh, shown the gold on the leg. We've shown it on the on the chest piece, and we haven't really shown it now on the arm. I think the main reason is it's actually all the same work. It's yeah. an, uh, nothing different. And same steps. Um, here we have a lot of very small details, um, same as here, mm. and you just work surface by surface, um, so there's actually nothing new to tell you about, and it took some time to finish the hand, so we don't want to be too repetitive on that. Yeah. While looking at the at the concept art of uh, Horus, we uh, were thinking of different uh, different ways of how to how to paint it. Mm. Uh, either we go for black and metal claws or full gold. Uh, it was quite a task to get it gold, but not too uh, vibrant and too too, too strong. Shiny kind of yeah, because it's quite a huge element, and uh, if that would turn out too light and too bright, you would take a lot of the attention from the face. Yeah, I think the the combination of the the main highlight and the secondary that is not that strong uh, really helps to break up the the surface and gives that uh, natural metal look. Do you remember how long it uh, took you to paint the fist, the claw? Mm. Uh, it's, hard. it's hard to tell. Um, I'd say two or three hours at least, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's again, I mean, the technique is the same as we showed you. It's actually very simple, especially when you're using uh, Ben's patented uh, loaded brush <laughs> technique. Um, but because there are so many surfaces, especially on the claw, it just takes a while. Okay, so that concludes the first part, isn't it? Yeah. So black and gold. Hope you enjoyed it. All right. All right.